So in this clip we'll talk about the co-determination of the interest rate and the exchange rate. Uh, so the interest rate being determined in the money market and the exchange rate being determined in the foreign exchange market and we'll consider how these two interact. Let's jump right into it and very briefly uh, review both of these markets. So the money market is usually shown in interest rate real money balance space the real money supply m over ps is exogenously determined by the monetary authorities the central bank and real money demand is a downward sloping function of the interest rate and a positive function of income that is what determines intersection here where money supply, real money supply and real money demand are equal, we get our equilibrium interest rate. So that is interest rate determination. And second, based on the idea of arbitrage, we have a model that gives us the today's today's level of the exchange rate um, and dollar returns on two different deposits. One of them, our dollar, is just the domestic rate, domestic interest rate, the domestic return on financial investment, and the other is the euro rate plus e hat e the expected exchange rate so where these are equal our dollar the interest rate in the US is equal to the interest rate in, in euro plus expected exchange rate depreciation and that is our no arbitrage condition and it determines the equilibrium exchange rate let's just recall here real brief what E hat E is that is the ex expected exchange rate for one period out minus today's exchange rate divided by today's exchange rate so this is the growth rate of the, expe the expected growth rate of the exchange rate where E is defined as the dollar price of one euro so that a higher value of the exchange rate implies a more depreciated dollar. So just to keep this in mind, so this graph on the right here is what gives us exchange rate determination. Now we want to put these two together. Now, how do we do that? Well, we'll see. We see it's easy to see here that uh, this axis and this axis are the same. We have here the interest rate, and here we have the dollar interest rate, so that we can, in fact, put this, the left hand graph, on the bottom of the right hand graph by turning it. Uh, by turning it 90 degrees towards the right. Let me go to a new page and show you how we'll do that. So, exchange rate here, the dollar return rates on this axis, the interest rate, and then in this direction real money balances so that is the uh, money market diagram turned uh, clockwise here we have real money supply and real money demand as the downward sloping function of the interest rate so you see that at this point we get the domestic interest rate 
our dollar which then enters the upper part of the diagram as the rate of return on financial investment in the US and we add to that the arbitrage condition that the sum of the euro interest rate plus the expected depreciation must be equal to the dollar interest rate for the foreign exchange market to be in equilibrium and we get our um, E star so in that sense we get here interest determination and then exchange rate determination jointly now how do we think about policy in this diagram well let's consider that let's consider one case where the national uh, monetary authorities the central bank in the US say uh, wants to decrease the interest rate what is the impact on uh, the domestic financial markets and what is the impact on foreign exchange markets so first we get that uh, decrease in the interest rate with an increase in the money supply call that M over PS2 we see that we get a new equilibrium here and a new interest rate a lower interest rate that clears the domestic financial markets what has happened in the process well the central bank uh, bought bonds by doing so provided the private sector participants with cash and by buying the bonds increase their price which reduced the yield on the bonds so that the interest rates fall and that is this move towards the left that translates then to the upper part of the diagram and we see that we get a new intersection here with a new new E star that is higher than the initial one so that we have a lower R and a higher E which means of course more depreciated since a higher E means the dollar price of one euro has gone up more dollars need to be paid for every every euro so um, what has happened in in the upper part of the diagram here how do we get to the new equilibrium well if we are initially at this equilibrium that I just circled red here then uh, the decrease in the interest rate implies a violation of the arbitrage condition so the dollar interest rate is lower than the euro interest rate plus the expected depreciation which means that uh, holders of financial investments in the US will uh, rush towards Europe buy euros and invest in financial assets there in order to get the higher rate of return and uh, by doing so, uh, by buying euros for dollars, uh, reduce the price of dollars and increase the price of euros. So if this happens, the rise in the exchange rate, and that ultimately leads to the new equilibrium where uh, the dollar rate, the new dollar rate is equal to the sum of the expected depreciation in the euro rate. Now, let's recall as well uh, what that really means for the expected depreciation. The important thing here is that the expected exchange rate one period hence, here the yellow highlighted expected level of the exchange 
uh, exchange rate one period hence has not changed so that that value against the now higher more depreciated exchange rate today uh, leads to a lower depreciation in the future so the sum of now lower depreciation in the future uh, and the unchanged euro exchange uh, euro interest rate will now again be equal to the lower uh, to the lower dollar rate and just like that the domestic financial market and the foreign exchange market interact to determine interest rates and exchange rates